man, it is way, way warmer than I thought it would be. I think it's probably 65 or so. I don't know what that is in Celsius. Like 18, 19. Uh, do you guys who use Celsius, do you understand Fahrenheit? Like I know it's dumb and only used by Americans, but like, is it helpful when I translate in videos or do you kind of get it? You know what 65 means? statement. It's like one of the coolest places in the country, if not the world. And uh, we got five of these volcanoes in Washington. It's pretty insane. Um, I think with landscape trips like this, there's a fine line to walk between not giving yourself enough time to location scout and giving yourself too much time, where by the time sunset rolls around and the light's nice, You've just completely worn yourself out because you've been hiking around all day. So I've got like three and a half hours left, so I feel like I've threaded the needle nicely today. I've got plenty of time to location scout and explore around and take it all in and enjoy it. Um, but not so much time that I'm going to be exhausted and uh, mentally wiped out of creative energy by the time 8.30 rolls around. I also say how nice it is that sunset is at a reasonable hour like 8.30 now instead of during the winter when it gets dark at basically noon. Not noon, like 4.30. Okay, snack time and uh, time-lapse time. So while that's going, I will give you a few thoughts and few tips on time lapses. Generally, you want everything to be steady and the same from shot to shot, except for what's moving in the frame. So that means you need to be on a, a steady tripod. It's not like the steadiest tripod in the world, but it's also not windy. I've shoved it deep enough, deep enough down into the snow where it shouldn't be moving from shot to shot. So you want the camera to be steady and you want everything else to be in completely manual mode. I don't shoot in manual mode very often when I'm doing photography, but with time lapse, you don't want there to be any changes between each individual shot besides like the clouds moving or whatever else is moving in the scene. So you want manual focus you want manual iso manual white balance manual shutter speed manual aperture manual everything you want it to be basically static if you're shooting a sunset or sunrise that might not be the best option but uh generally if, if the light is staying fairly constant when in doubt put everything in manual mode and then every camera is going to be a little bit different here mine has i think it's called like interval shoot setting or interval shoot function or something like that basically i just tell it take a picture every five seconds for 240 shots or for 480 shots and you can determine the number of shots you want uh, depending on a couple things one you have to decide are you going to be posting the video or, or pu publishing the video in 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second or maybe maybe something else but generally I always shoot in 24 frames per second. So that means that I have to take 24 photos for every second of footage that I want. So if I want a 10 second time lapse, multiply that by 24, that's 240. I'm doing 480 right now to give myself a 20, uh, yeah, a 20 second time lapse, which is long, but then I can choose a chunk of it and choose the most interesting chunk of it later. Then, the, then you just have to wait and hope that, hope you did, did everything right. Um, and assuming that I did, I will show you guys that time lapse right now. I keep hearing little rock falls over there. I mean, way in, way in the distance. There's no, no danger right here, but it's so warm, everything's just melting very quickly today, and I think that means that rocks are getting exposed from out from under the snow, and it's just... Uh, we're in a season of transition. Um, speaking of transition, it does not feel like winter anymore, even though I'm walking on 10 feet of snow. It's warm, and this jacket is only for sun protection. It's actually a little bit too hot for it. Pretty crazy. 
But I'm excited for summer in the mountains. All of this melts. This will be just a field of wildflowers up here, which is pretty cool. I've never seen it during peak wildflower season, but I hope to come back later this summer. Um, I'm heading back slowly towards the car. I've still got several hours until sunset, but I think there are some shots down here, at least one of which will require a person in the shot. So I'm either gonna camp out and uh, wait for someone to hike up or down through the shot, basically street photography in the mountains, or I'll have to set up the tripod again and be that person myself. Walk back and forth and do a selfie. So uh, hopefully someone walks through the shot. Otherwise I've got some, uh, some bonus steps to do today. Okay, so it's that shot there, but zoomed into like 70 mil, 80 mil, something like that. And uh, I just need a person to come around the bend. I, I hear voices, so maybe it'll be someone. I'll take a shot now so you can see what the, the frame will look like without people. And then uh, hopefully some people walking, because that's a long way down to where I want the subject to be, if it has to end up being me. But uh, I got some time, so I'm, I'm willing to wait a little bit. All right, just had like a maybe hour long conversation with another photographer named Dave. Nice guy, lives local in the area. And then while we were chatting, um, <laughs> some other guy came up and was like, hey, can you point me in the, in the way down? Is it that way or that way? And I was like, uh, I think both, but would you mind going to the left so that I can have a person in my frame? I've been waiting for a while now. <laughs> and he laughed and he went that way. So I think I got a good shot. Well, that's some nice light on those peaks there. Dave and I were talking about how nice it is to be able to be out here on a weekday. I think he has like sort of like a non-traditional work schedule working on, I don't know, he works on the weekends and he's off during the week sometimes. Um, yeah, it's easy to take it for granted because it just feels normal so quickly, but it really is amazing. And I'm trying not to take it for granted because it's nice to be able to be out here on a Wednesday evening. Nice to be out here any day, but especially when it's empty like this because there were a bunch of people when I got here they've all gone home because I don't know it's what it's what non-photographers seem to do nice to have the whole place to ourselves though is this creepy it's like street photography it's fine right I think that was good. When I when I do shots like that, when there's someone in the scene, um, I usually take a bunch because the body language is gonna change a little bit from shot to shot and I'm shooting digital, so I can just take a bunch, pick my favorite one later. It's turning into a really nice evening. All right, well, I've got like an hour and a half left till sunset like probably two hours left of decent light until it's dark dark. Unfortunately, I'm out of water. I'm very close to it and kind of thirsty. So I could eat some snow. That's probably not a good idea. And uh, yeah, just gonna head back, head back to the car and then either hike back up here, which feels a little bit ridiculous, but I'm not thirsty and I've got time. Maybe I'll do a, another trail entirely. We shall see. Lesson learned. If I'm going to come out here for four or five hours ahead of sunset, I need more than one bottle of water. I should have known that. I will say one thing that I learned shooting the mountains in Colorado, the five years that I lived there, the best view is not always the closest view. Sometimes it's better to get further away from the mountain because then you have a better view of the mountain. I think that's the case with Mount Rainier. You get really nice views from Rainier of other things, but the best view of Rainier isn't necessarily as close as you can get to it, unless you're wanting to photograph details in the glaciers or something. I don't know if you can see on the GoPro, but right there on those peaks, there's clouds rolling in over them.
that could be cool. I have no idea what's going to happen to sunset today. That could go either way at this point. Hopefully I'm in a good spot when it happens, if it does. Man, in the like 10 minutes that it took to go down and get some water, and then walk to the other trailhead at the other side of the parking lot, the clouds rolled in and you literally can't see Mount Rainier anymore. I mean, it's just like thick fog. We'll see if it clears. We've still got an hour until sunset, but it's not looking promising at the moment. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I've lived in Washington for like year, almost two years now. And I still just cannot get over how freaking huge this mountain is. It just looks too big. Even from here where I'm, on, I'm already at like 5,000 feet. Um, there's still like another 9,000 feet of, it's just, it's big, it's big. I feel like it's one of those things that never comes across in photos, the scale of it. And I feel like it's just kind of impossible. Like it's easy to show that it's big, but it's impossible to show that it's like way bigger than other mountains. Look at this. Holy cow. That is insane. There's like massive waterfalls, glaciers, volcano, like soft pastel light, cascading river. Not too shabby. All right, so that was a better view over there, but I think this is a better photo for a couple of reasons. One, I think this part of Rainier, this view of Rainier is better shot landscape, horizontal, because as tall and pointy of a mountain as it is, from up close like this, from this angle, it mostly spreads out side to side. So in a lot of the shots, I'm wanting this to be landscape, horizontal, whatever. Because of that, that shot didn't really work. There was not really like a, a way to make a rectangle out of it. It just kind of like emptied out of the bottom of the frame. It was really cool to see that river valley, but I like on this shot, I like these trees. Oop, all right. I like these trees and I like this line of snow. The fog rolled in a little bit. That would be pretty cool if the fog breaks and the sunset pokes through. More likely that the clouds have just rolled in and that was the last of the light. Well, we are well and truly socked in, in the clouds. Kind of came out of nowhere, but they did so right at sunset, which is a little bit annoying, but so it goes sometimes. Still think I got some nice shots today and an amazing day out. Got to get back out to Mount Rainier again soon. I've not spent nearly enough time here. Thanks as always for the support. I'll see you next time.